So I think that one of the hardest things about junior lab is that you're asking students to do something that they really have not done before. They have not, for the most part, there are a few that will have actually worked um, as what we call year ops, um, undergraduate research, researchers, but uh, for the most part, most of them have not been on their own independently working in a lab where they have to figure out what are their goals, they have to figure out what is the um, uh, outcome that is going to be good enough, and so forth. Uh, so there's, there's a couple of things that they learn over the arc of the, of the semester. So one of them is how to actually budget your time so that you can actually get a paper out. Papers don't actually end, uh, they just stop. You know, there reaches a point where you're just like, okay, I'm done and I'm gonna stop. And learning how to do that is something that just takes a lot of practice. Uh, so there, there's that. Uh, then they're actually also learning a set of practical skills that I definitely see evolution on over the semester. So especially with error analysis, they really improve after lab one. So they will have done the lab zero, which is the set of three, and those are, they you know, are walked through rather, rather closely. Then they're on their own on lab one, and the errors analysis is always really interesting. <laughs> and then we work on that a little bit, and you find that they get much more sophisticated about error analysis, and the very best ones start learning all kinds of things about error analysis that are not just the standard things. Um, you know, I had a, a student this semester who was very excited about learning what's called the delta chi-squared method, which is where uh, you have a model, and you change your model so it introduces some extra parameters and you look at how, the change, how much of a change of chi-squared you get given the change of degrees of freedom that you've just introduced to see if that model is a better model than the one you had before. And uh, so they become much more sophisticated in that kind of thing. They also become much more relaxed with the equipment. Uh, they understand how the equipment works. Usually by a lab two, somebody's broken something and discovered that it, it didn't really mean the world ended it was okay. <laughs> and so they're more willing to actually be more adventurous and just come in and set things up and so forth. And, uh, and also they will have gotten into a groove with their lab partner uh, and that's an important point also. Uh, most of the time they don't seem to know their lab partner before they get started. And uh, so figuring out what each other's better skills are and how you play them to advantage is an important thing for them to do. And it's important in real life too. You know, most, most physicists work in small collaborations or even big collaborations. So uh, being able to work with somebody and figure out how to bring the best out of them is a very important thing.